I'm going to demonstrate how to mix alginate and I'm also going to show you different types of impression trays. In the surgery when you're working you should be able to choose the kind of tray uh, that you're going to use depending on what it is going to be used for. So first of all you have to be able to tell the difference between upper and lower impression trays. So here you have a selection of impression trays and on this side you have the lower impression trays and on this side you have the upper impression trays. The see the difference between the two is that for the lower impression trays there is a gap in the middle where the patient's tongue will go when this is placed in the mouth. Impression trays can be dentate or edentulous depending on whether the patient has teeth or not. We say that the tray is dentate when the patient has some or all of their teeth in the mouth. And here we have an example of an upper dentate impression tray. You will see the, that the tray is quite deep and it's quite square in shape. When we compare this to an edentulous tray, you will see that the edentulous tray is used for patients who have no teeth in their mouth or are edentulous. And this tray is much shallower and it, is, it has much smoother or um, it's much curvier than the dentate tray. This is because this tray will fit over the patient's alveolar ridge where there are no teeth in place. So, to go through the trays once again, this is an upper metal edentulous impression tray. This one happens to be perforated and the reason that the impression trays are perforated is that when the material uh, is placed in the tray and placed in the patient's mouth, the material will squeeze through the holes and it, when it sets, the material and the tray will stay as one. This one is a lower metal edentulous impression tray. The next one is an upper metal dentate impression tray. As you see, this one is not perforated, but it has a wire here which will help with retention or will, will help keeping the alginate in the impression tray once it's been taken out of the patient's mouth. For this kind of tray it might be useful to put a tray adhesive onto the impression tray before placing the impression material in the tray. Here we have a lower dentate metal impression tray and the last two trays are lower and upper dentate disposable impression trays. So these trays are single use and as you see they don't have handles on them. In the exam or in the surgery if you get a tray like this you will have to place the handle as well. So here I have a handle and the handle will go in like this, so that when this is placed in the patient's mouth, the, the lip will fit in this gap here between the handle and the tray. In the lower tray, it will be something similar. So we have the lower tray, it would go in the mouth, let's say in my mouth, like this. Therefore, the handle, oops, the handle will go in like that. So this is the different impression trays. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to mix the alginate. And in the exam you will be set a task. So you will have to mix alginate for a specific procedure. They will tell you what the procedure is and therefore you have to choose the appropriate tray. So in this task I'm going to mix alginate for an upper full denture. So this means that the patient is completely edentulous and therefore I have to use an upper edentulous tray. 
So I'm going to choose my tray. I'm going to put all the others to the side because I will not need them. In order to mix alginate, you will need your alginate powder. You will need a rubber mixing bowl. A mixing spatula. It, the mixing spatula can either be metal or plastic. This one happens to be plastic. You need a scoop for your powder, a measure for the water, and a water source, which in the surgery would usually be water from the tap. The powder, uh, the alginate powder, is um, composed of is based on seaweed and we say that alginate is an irreversible hydrocolloid. This means that once we mix this powder with water it permanently gels with the water and it will never go back to its original state. That's why we say that it's irreversible. The ratio for mixing alginate is one to one so we need one scoop of the powder to one measure of water which is at room temperature. For most trays, although I know this is a generalization, but for most trays two scoops of powder are enough, but in the exam and in the surgery as well you'll have to judge how many scoops of the powder you will need depending on the size of the tray. I have chosen this tray and I think that two scoops of the powder will be enough. So I begin by fluffing up the powder. So I shake the box to fluff up the powder to make sure that it is nice and even inside. I'm going to tap the lid to make sure that nothing comes out when I open the box. and I put the lid this side up. I'm going to use my scoop and the way this works is that I scoop the powder and I level it off like this and I place the powder into the bowl. I try not to touch the bowl with my scoop. You will see that this particular spatula has a straight edge and a curved edge so when I'm leveling off the powder I always use the straight edge of the spatula. I'm going to use two scoops of the powder so I take another one and level it off and place in the bowl. I make sure that there is no powder left on the instruments and I put them on the side. I close my box and I make sure and you should make sure as well that you never ever leave the scoop inside the powder. I'm going to close my box and make sure that the lid is tight to prevent any cross-contamination or spillages and I'm going to put it to the side. Now I have my powder inside my bowl. I'm going to use the water and I'm going to use two measures of the water. When I measure the water, I have to make sure that I'm measuring it on a flat surface. I'm going to leave the measure on the table and I have to kneel down to make sure that the water level is exactly on the line. Okay, now I think it's all right. Please remember that you always put the powder in first and only then you add the water to the powder. So I have my mixing spatula. I'm going to add the water and I'm going to hold the bowl like this. Then with the tip of my spatula I'm going to mix the water and the powder until there is no more dry powder left in my bowl. Then. I'm going to change my grip and I'm going to put the bowl in the palm of my hand and I'm going to very vigorously and quickly spatulate the material by making sure that if there is any unevenness or any lumps in the material it will be evened out and made smoother. I'm aiming for a smooth lump free consistency. So I mix it very briskly and then when I think it's about ready I'm going to collect 
all of it in one place like this, making sure that there is not too much left in the bowl. I've got it on my spatula and now I'm going to place it or load the impression tray. I make sure that there is material everywhere on the tray because this is for a full denture and the full denture will be lying everywhere on the palette. So there we have. This is a loaded impression tray. Like this, he would pass it to the dentist where, and then he will insert it into the patient's mouth. In the exam, what is required of you is to wipe your spatula with the tissue that you have. And then, of course, in the surgery, you have to wipe the bowl too.